Hi, I'm Tom Lynch, and welcome to In Focus Fridays. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Trang Bo Pham. Trang is an assistant professor in epidemiology in the Public Health Sciences Division here at the Fred Hutch. She's also an affiliate assistant professor in epidemiology at the University of Washington. Trang joined the Fred Hutch faculty last spring. Her research interests are focused on studying environmental risk factors for cancer using methods in geospatial science and was recently awarded an NIH Career Development Grant to look at air pollution and health disparities. So Trang, I guess the first question is, we were in the midst of this unbelievable uh, smoke exposure that we had. Uh, and I think air pollution became really personal to so many people here in Seattle. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Is, is, what do we know about the risk of air pollution and development of cancer in general? Um. In general, I think in terms of cancer specifically, there is evidence uh, demonstrating that there is a positive association between air pollution in general, particulate matter air pollution in general, uh, with lung cancer. But the body of literature with uh, other cancers, for example, liver cancer, is growing, and that is the topic of the grant that I was just awarded. Terrific. So you got it. So what is geospatial science? So geospatial science is. Uh, pretty fascinating in my opinion, and I think it's a really valuable way to identify and make sense of patterns of uh, exposures and diseases across space. So everything around us is tied to some location on Earth uh, or some latitude and longitude. And geospatial science is comprised of methods and tools uh, that essentially allow us to use and analyze location-based data called spatial data. Uh, and one of the more relatively popular geospatial tools is called Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. And you can use GIS to really represent anything as spatial data. For example, administrative boundaries like census tracts as polygons. You can represent people's homes as points, uh, roads as lines, and even variables like temperature uh, as continuous surfaces across space. So. With this in mind, we can harness this spatial information and determine what environmental factors associated with the locations where we live, work, and spend our time, such as air pollutants, uh, chemicals in drinking water, et cetera, to then determine what environmental factors might impact our health and possibly even our risk of developing cancer. So I, I can get a sense, I can understand a little bit of that, 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 that you can, about how you can look at certain environmental factors, but how do you then link it to disease? What kind of a database do you use to link it to disease incidence and development? And how good do we have disease incidence at the, at the uh, GPS level? So we can link spatial data to many different data sets with available locational data. And I think there are many interesting applications of geospatial science uh, in cancer research specifically, and especially in cancer epidemiology. And the three main uses uh, in my work are one, uh, mapping, for example. So uh, visualizing patterns of cancer statistics, like incidents, and also levels of environmental exposures uh, across a study area. And I think mapping is really useful for hypothesis, hypothesis generation, uh, also for descriptive looks into your data, and then just illuminating geographic disparities, for example. Uh, two, we can also model uh, or creating models or representations of your data, whether it be environmental exposures like air pollution or socioeconomic data like median household income. These models can be developed using geospatial tools. And, Three, uh, to your, specifically to your question, uh, we can conduct data linkages for epidemiologic studies. For example, linking together multiple data sets based on available location-based data to answer an epidemiologic research question. And this has actually been the approach of many of our published epidemiologic studies, where we have data from a prospective cohort of individuals, for example. And we've used GIS to link the residential home address locations of these participants to spatial data on an environmental exposure of interest, like air pollution. And then we've conducted analyses to see if individuals who are exposed high levels of that particular uh, spatial, spatially derived environmental exposure have a higher risk of developing cancer. So when I think of liver cancer, 
Um, I think of hepatitis uh, A, B, and C. I think about other uh, diseases that cause cirrhosis as being the major etiologic factors. Um, I, I wasn't really terribly aware of environmental factors that might be involved in liver cancer. Tell me about that. Sure. So definitely the major major established risk factors for liver cancer, just as you mentioned, include chronic hepatitis B virus, chronic hepatitis C virus. Um, an environmental risk factor that is established is aflatoxin, for example, but that's more prevalent in areas of um, parts of Asia, sub-Saharan Africa, et cetera. And this, so going back to the grant that I was awarded. Yeah. Uh, so this is, um, so I'm very excited about this. This is a five-year project funded uh, this summer, actually, by the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, or NIDVK. And this project seeks to answer the following questions. So one, does exposure to air pollution increase the risk of developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD or NAFLD? Uh, two, does air pollution exposure increase the risk of developing hepatocellular carcinoma, or HCC? And then three, does air pollution exposure have an impact on disparities in the incident of incidence of NAFLD and HCC? So for example, does air pollution have a different impact on women versus men, or one racial ethnic group versus another, or for residents in one geographic region of the U.S. versus another? And just briefly, some background to help contextualize. Yeah. Um, this grant specifically focuses on particulate matter air pollution less than 2.5 microns in diameter, or PM2.5, which is primarily produced from fossil fuel combustion, uh, such as from cars. And these fine scale particles can penetrate deep into our lungs. And there is some evidence that air pollution uh, may adversely impact the liver. Some animal and human studies have shown that once inhaled, PM2.5 particles, they can enter the bloodstream and interact with liver tissue. And, you know, the health outcomes for this study that, you know, I just talked about are NAFLD, which is uh, fat accumulation in the liver, which can subsequently progress to uh, HCC, which is the most uh, commonly occurring histological type of primary liver cancer. And there are research gaps with these diseases. Some cases are not explained by known risk factors, such as the ones that you mentioned uh, in regards to hepatitis. And then also factors, um, factors driving observed disparities in developing these diseases, such as differences by sex, race, ethnicity, and geography, they're not completely understood. So with this grant, we are attempting to address important research gaps. And We'll be exploring this topic with a very rich data set uh, using nationwide electronic health records or EHRs from the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs or the VA and uh, residential addresses of these veterans will be linked with high resolution uh, geospatial based PM 2.5 exposure predictions. And this research project is in collaboration with exceptional investigators at Fred Hutch University of Washington and VA. So Drs. George Iwanu, Kristen Berry, Joe Kaufman, and Jay Mendoza. So I'm very excited to start on this work. Terrific. So I guess the last question I want to ask you is, how do your data needs get met when you're looking at, at questions? This I imagine this is fairly data intensive and requiring a lot of resources to allow you to be able to, to look at databases this large. Yes, absolutely. Um, so luckily with the research group that uh, I will be working with at the VA, they have conducted many large scale intensive projects using electronic health records from the VA. So they do have a process in place. And there also have been previous studies linking residential address locations of these veterans to exposure data sets like for air pollution. So there's a precedent and we'll have you know access to just so much information with regards to clinical conditions, demographics, et cetera. Great, so uh, Dr. Balfam, I wanna thank you so much for the work you're doing. It's a wonderful example of how we can bring together uh, public health uh, science, work in disparities and cancer, and, and I wish you the very best in putting this together. That's, this is Tom Lynch, and this is In Focus Fridays. Thanks a lot.